So I had previously promised a review where I compare the YH5000 SE to the Focal Utopia, D8000 Pro, etc. Basically, other super expensive high-end audiophile headphones. Long story short, working on a multi-pronged review of headphones like that is uh, a pretty monstrous task. And I don't really have the time to devote a week to one review. So today we're doing a listening test of the YH5000 SE, the Final Audio D8000 Pro, and the Dan Clark Expanse. And I'll be doing some very basic analysis of the results at the end. I previously thought that I would have access to the Focal Utopia 2022. Alas, I don't. So apologies to everybody that I promised that to and that was maybe looking forward to this review for that reason. Also, special thanks to Audio46 for supplying me with the headphones with which I'm making this review. Um, if you click the links down below to purchase any of these headphones, you will help support the channel. And I would really, really appreciate that. So if you're unfamiliar with how this stuff works, don't skip this part. Uh, here's a very important rundown and explanation of how a test like this works. Uh, I'm using a calibrated mini DSP ears binaural microphone to conduct this test. I will begin by playing the control or reference file. This is simply a test track file not being played through any set of headphones. I'll then play the same file through the sets of headphones that I have here. What you're hearing is, and I want to emphasize this, not, not, not what the headphones really sound like. Rather, you can think of it as listening to the headphones or speakers that you're currently using being played through a filter a YH5000 SE filter, a D8000 Pro filter, a Dan Clark Expanse filter. You're going to get the best understanding of what these headphones sound like by considering these, let's call them, headphone filters relative to one another. Okay, conditions under which I carried out the test. I used a homemade isolation box in a quiet space, and that got me a noise floor of negative 70 dB. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for our purposes. I used my Android phone to my iBaso DC06 dongle slash DAC to play a WAV file of a corny copyright free track from the YouTube music library. I'm sorry about that. I'm working with what I got here. All files were recorded into Logic with the mini DSP ears by Neural Microphone to peak at negative six decibels. The file marked control is the direct digital file. I'll be displaying an EQ analyzer for the control and our three headphone variables uh, throughout all of our listens. Each equalizer is marked with the name of the headphone on the top of its respective window. I'll give some basic analysis on the results after all four files have been played. And now let's get into it, starting with the control slash reference file. I encourage you to skip around between uh, all four of the files that we're going to be listening with to get the best sense of a comparison. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, let's take a look at what we can talk about here. I'm not going to spend too, too long with this because it was a fairly casual test, but there are a few things that I think are evident. Um, so here, here's a freeze frame of the EQs when the snare hits. So all of the headphones show a peak around 5 kilohertz uh, that isn't really that prominent in the original file. It's like a tiny bump in the original reference file. Uh, and yet there's a distinct peak for all of the headphones. Um, I'll be honest, this is one of two things, uh, a genuine mid-treble boost in this area on all of the headphones, or, and I honestly suspect this as the more likely option, as it just seems too damn similar on all of the headphones, uh, we're dealing with a resonance peak that results from a flaw in either my testing methodology, maybe it was the resonance in my DIY ISO booth or something like that, or a flaw with the mini DSP ears itself, which is a good enough uh, kind of casual tool, but sometimes has these issues in the ear gain region. Um, however, if we take a look just a little higher up from five kilohertz, uh, we do have something to talk about here. Um, the Yamaha seems to be exhibiting significantly more treble extension. It's also really picking up on the peak around seven kilohertz. Um, kind of interesting because we actually do see this peak present in the reference file, but the only headphone here that's really running with it is the YH5000SE. Um, another notable observation here uh, in the treble is actually to be found with the Dan Clark Expanse, which seems to have the most uh, consistently amplified high mids and low treble. Uh, I'm referring here to the region from one kilohertz to say four kilohertz. Okay, uh, here's a second screenshot just after a kick drum hit. Uh, a, a little less for us to talk about here. Um, I'll just point out that the Yamaha has moderately more mid bass and just a hair more sub bass it seems than the other headphones. Also, this is a good screenshot to show that it has some more center mids going for it than the D8000 Pro. Uh, the difference in this region is still there compared to the Expanse, but it's much less meaningful. Um, anyway, you can see and hear for yourself, and I really hope this video was helpful if you're lucky enough to be seriously considering any of these headphones. Uh, you can support the channel, which I would be eternally grateful for, by clicking the links below to buy the YH5000 SE, D8000 Pro, and Dan Clark Expanse from Audio46. If you want to see review videos and maybe more videos like this, I think this is actually a major hi-fi first, uh, remember to like and subscribe. Anyway, this is Chris with Major Hi-Fi, and I'll see you next time.